Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. Felix came in and, and said that we were complacent. You had to navigate the waters of an appeal or something like that. And, you know, it's it hurt. I mean, there's, there's a couple of them who haven't talked since, hardly. That NASCAR told you almost a year before that. Yeah, it was over that, a year. That you were going. Yeah. They tell you why. No. Never it's did. Just, just time for a change. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. How is it you wound up leaving Zabco? Because you said it was, it got, it was a pleasant two yeah, years. Yeah, I, I think... I think the... You know, we were pretty close to Allen, hmm. right? And and we worked with Alan. Like I had the Bilstein shop truck was in our parking lot all the time. They stored it there, and I would go in and build my shocks, and then I would build shocks for Alan and run them on the dyno and really? talk to Alan about stuff. And we were we went to dinner all the time. You know, they, he would come out to the house at the lake and. He would get on the pontoon boat and he'd swim with the kids and stuff. You know, we we had Kyle and him and I and the families had good relationship. So that leading into, you know, the events that happened and, and Felix was I believe Felix was the executor to the estate. And when everything happened you know, I mean, Felix really was, he felt the loss probably more than any of us, and we all felt it, you know. And, you know, when he was getting things buttoned up over there and going through things and, and you know, and he would come back and say, you've got, you know, you've got a seat in every car, you know, you're spending all this money. Alan only had one seat that he took and put it in every car he had. And, you know, Alan did it this way, and you know, and and so the the pressure to Alan won the championship, and and you know we finished whatever top five or something like that, which is great for us. You know, I, I think I I think it just changed the dynamics with us, right? And you know he, you know Felix got the, you know looking at the the bills and stuff like that and. Not being a, you know, a, a, a in the trenches car guy. Sometimes he didn't have all the information he had to make decisions, and he would go off on you. And then realize, then when you talk to True, he said, oh, "Okay, I didn't know that was that. This was brake calipers, or this was valve springs, or w- whatever." But it just got to be picking on each other a little bit too much, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think it was. Um, you know, he and I, he, he had had his fill of me, and I was, I was just, you know, tired of, of just things, right? right? I mean, we all lost a friend, right? But I think that, that just changed the dynamics. And, you know, we were in, we blew up at Charlotte in the 600, and... And we were tenth in points, and so I'd given all the guys the day off on Monday, and my brothers Roman and Ryan, we worked taking the motor out of the car, you know, getting it ready for when they everybody come in on Tuesday, you know, we just and uh, Felix come in and and said that we were complacent and. Oh, we were, you know, we were accepted mediocrity and fired all three of us the same day. Mm-hmm. And we were in there working on a holiday, you know. But that's the pressure of the team. You know, that's 
you know, and and you you fast forward a year from there, right? So I, well, you know, and you know we got along, but you know we made, you know, yeah. we made up and moved on a long time after, you know, well, short while after that. You rejoined Roush to crew chief for Ted Musgrave. Yeah. Now, were you comfortable doing that? Going back? Yeah. I, I was. I, I, you know, I think we set on three poles in the f second half of the year after I got there, and you know, I felt like I was comfortable with that, mm -hmm. but something wasn't just clicking right, you know. And whether it was maybe and had you know spent some years in in Charlotte through you know three years in Charlotte or whatnot or uh, it just wasn't clicking hmm. you know even though we had some success you know I, f I, I just felt like it was if something else different would happen like maybe if I, you know we you know I had Wally or I had Mark or I had something but you know Ted and I we get along good now, but we didn't really we didn't really see eye to eye mm -hmm. when when we were working together. And you know, no fault to anybody's his or you know maybe mine, but of his for sure. It just didn't feel homey enough for me, you know. Well, then how did you get hooked up with Rusty and Roger Pinsky? This seemed to work. Yeah, that was I. I rode motorcycle to Phoenix for the Phoenix race, like we always used to do, and. I was I was putting the bike up like Thursday night something at in front of the hotel and uh, Don Miller walks out they were staying at the same hotel and he started talking to me and want to talk to you and this that and the other and you know and uh, so I said yeah when I get back to North Carolina next week I'll we'll get together so we got together and you know they explained what they needed and what they wanted and and uh, see so yeah, okay I'll do you it. were there at least seven full seasons yeah well, what made that relationship work uh, you know I, we all got along really well you know even when we were arguing about stuff we got along really well I think it it worked because I, we had, you know, we had we we're building our own chassis, or we got to that. We, you know, with chassis had our own, you know, engines and gears, transmissions, shock guys. We had a lot of that stuff that you had either one or two parts of it at every other place you'd ever been to. But we had the whole thing, and facility was nice. You know, and you know, I got along good with Don and and and, and uh, Rusty, and you know, Roger. You know, he would come to the races, and you know, ask you questions, and you explain stuff, and it felt like maybe I was doing an okay job for him, so it made you feel good about yourself. Right. You know? so, What's your best memory about working with Rusty? Do you have a particular memory? Oh God, you can't. You don't even want to know him all. Uh, I mean, I know. Yeah, you know. good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. We had this we were we went to Sears Point as a for the race, right? And by then as a after leaving Felix we we learned to go taste wine when you're out there in Sonoma, right? So here we go. We had been doing it. <laughs> so Lisa and I, we went out. We would we would go out on Mondays anyway. So we made a plan to take the early crew out a, a day or two days early. Rusty was paying, and Lisa and I rented two two stretch limos and put three couples in one and two couples in another, and then we went wine tasting. We rent these limos and we start off at like. 10 or 11 in the morning and we go up we go up to the Sonoma side of the mountain range and we stop and we get food for everybody to put in limos and then we 
drink all the way up and over the mountain and drink all the way back and and you know and it was 11 o'clock at night when we get done I right? had a great time and you know everybody hey we'll call each other we'll go do lunch tomorrow you know tomorrow's a recoup day this that and the other nobody called anybody I mean there was people were sleeping with ice bags on their head and not getting out of bed and do this that and the other so we go to finally get to the racetrack the next day for practice and qualifying we're still not feeling good like we've got red wine poisoning or something like that right and so rusty goes out he runs a couple laps comes in yeah i don't know i said we we're out there testing i mean we knew we were fast and we we're like three seconds off you know it was like oh boy this is not gonna be well, good so he i said look let's just we'll look at the car you know let's check this thing out and go up in the lounge and you know do whatever you do right whatever watch tv and think about it so he comes back out runs another we didn't run the next practice then run the practice after a little bit gets lapped and he's like yeah it's feeling better we may have run two laps and um then we got ready to qualify so we sat on a pole right once we got all feeling well whatever and uh, and we won the race that weekend then we were it, it was a rough time we it started off great it had a rough two or three days in the middle of it but <laughs> when it come time to do business we sat on the pole and we won the race so it was good. you went back to petty enterprises as general general manager in 2002 what was it like being there during that time just a couple of years after we'd lost adam it started out well and then it just and then it just got stale. It can't, it's like we had plans to do a lot of different things, right? We had, you know, wind tunnel models and engineering and, and things like that. And we got down to, it was late in that first season, right? I mean, we had Christian Fittipaldi, and he was, he did a good job. And, you know, Kyle was kind of in a transition or, you know, it, it was towards the end of the year it just wasn't getting it it wasn't you know and that once again that was a 10-year contract so wow my first 10-year contract lasted 16 months or 18 and this and this one lasted 11 <laughs> and you know it just it was you know Kyle said it wasn't working you know I mean we had run better we had put better people in place and it just wasn't like it was you know I, I mean I I kind of went out on a limb to leave Penske's to do that right and so it, it kind of it, that that kind of hurt a little bit so what possessed you to go to work for NASCAR <laughs> well there was something in between that so the Ford thing Ford yeah so I so I I left so whenever I left at, at uh, Petty's at November December whatever it happened to be and so I called so I was just kind of looking at some different stuff and so I called Jack because we didn't really leave on we left on bad terms, but we made amends when he, uh, for some other things, we we talked things through. And Jack and and Jack said, I, I got an idea. Let's see. He's like, you know, Ford needs a guy. They need somebody embedded in the NASCAR area, right? And so, Jim Hunter and I were friends forever. And don't ask me how it started. And whatever we were just friends same thing with bill france and this is all part of the ford thing right so occasionally through the years bill and i would always talk about different things he's like yeah, you know i want you to come work for me someday i want you you know yeah i'd like to do that this is like went on for eight or nine years whatever ten and so now i'm i'm unemployed and so 
Hunter, Jack calls Ford, and then somehow Hunter got involved, and then Bill calls and says, we're working on a deal, you know what I mean, this, that, and the other, and so I said, okay, and then Mike Helton gets involved, and so they actually were like, to Ford, you need, you know, this, this could be a good guy for you, go in here, right? So kind of in the middle of all that, take it some years before or after, when I was in between, like, Bill said, you know, I want you to come to work for me. I said, well, I'm, I just started this job. He said, well, you need to tell me when you leave or you need, you know, we're always a half a step off, right? So now, I, so I called, when I called, that's what I did. I called Hunter and Hunter went to Bill and Bill said, yeah, you know, I, I don't, now is not the time. So, but they thought the Ford thing was good. So I do the, you know, kind of put that Ford thing together. So I was their field manager. And so it, it worked out well, you know. I mean, I tried to keep the Ford teams happy with each other. Worked with uh, Bernie Marcus Aero program, and we did Aero studies, and we handed all the information out to the teams. And it was kind of, you know, added to the credibility of the program and trying to be neutral, right? And then we developed the the Taurus in that in that time frame, and so. I, I'm not in it a year yet, and Hunter calls and says, "Bill, wa Bill wants you to talk to you." And you know, and he just talked to Bill. He's like, "Ah, you know, we're working on some stuff. You know, we need, you know, we need help. We need, we, we think we need somebody." I said, "Well, you just got me this three-year deal with Ford, and we're 11 months in, and now we're off base again, right?" And so it took, they worked on it for a, a probably better part of eight, eight or ten months mm -hmm. to try to get Ford where they'd be happy to let me go to come to NASCAR. And so, you know, I started that in August, right after Bristol. I had already done some NASCAR meetings, you know, a couple of weeks before I left. Ford, but I mean, it was a long process to, to get everybody happy for me to leave Ford and go to NASCAR. And so that's how that started. How was it, how strange was it for you to be policing people that you had known for years? Yeah, it, it wasn't, I'm a slow starter, so what I mean by that is I don't, you don't go in and just lay out. Here's your note. You know, here's what we're gonna do, right? It's like I, I, I like to get a good read on what it's all about, and it usually takes me six, eight months to, you know, to even come out of my shell a little bit. The biggest thing that 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 came out of it really for all the parties is my buddies in the garage were like, okay, now Robin's there. You know, NASCAR's gonna, they're really gonna understand how, how the teams have to operate and this, that, and the other. And, you know, he'll be a good voice for us. But what actually happened was, once I was in the NASCAR thing, I could say, okay, I'd go out to my friends and we'd talk, you know, have a couple beers and talk about, you know, what's like, this, that, and the other. And, and once I started to explain to him, how the NASCAR rule book went and how all the meetings went and how, I mean, there's no one person that makes a decision. There's a committee on everything. And, and you know, you're working on rules a year and a half, two years out, right? Even though you do your rule book meeting in August, which was, you know, August for the following year, there's so much leg work that goes on. And to explain that to some of the guys that wanted to hear, you know, it, out in the, that were in the field, they're like, oh, that's how it works. Okay. Well, it kind of, it kind of leveled it a little, you know, took yeah. the highs, filled in the lows and took some of the highs away when you explained how, how it all really went down, you know. You had a very quiet tenure at NASCAR with no controversy whatsoever. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you had 2007 Daytona Speed Weeks and all the penalties that, that were handed out. Uh, Michael Waltrip's deal. Uh, the car tomorrow. Boys have at it. <laughs> spin gate. <laughs> You were at ground zero of a lot of different events that exposed you to a lot of different opinions from a lot of different people. How was it, what was it like for you personally to deal with those kinds of situations? Because I can't imagine the pressure. Yeah. At all, period. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of, it, you know, you, know, you, you wore that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not good at, negative stuff you know and that's a, that was a lot of negative stuff and for people people later years and years later um, when they finally you know and people that I'd known for a while would finally break the silence and say you know I can't believe this with with Boyer and Michael Waltrip and on and on and on and and that's and you'd have to explain the whole situation to him and so here is a grown man businessman that hears it from my side for the first time or from our side or the nascar side i mean this is something that happened after i'd left nascar somebody would finally approach me and said what about this and when i explain it to them they're like oh i never knew and I've been angry all this time, right? I mean, you know, you're 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 on the beginning stages of negotiating what would be gambling and this, that, and the other, right? And you have a team that tanks, the, yeah, that fixes that, a yeah. race. I mean, you know, I mean, they didn't know that that's what they were doing until you dissect it, you know, and. I said that's that could be that's a that's a huge deal on a black eye, and when you explain it like that, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, and you know there was other events that happened that once you explain it to people, but there's some angry people out there, yeah. still angry. Did it damage relationships? Yeah, yeah, I've got there's there's a couple, you know, and uh, guys who I thought I was good friends with that. You know, when you when you had to navigate the waters of an appeal or something like that, and you know, it's it hurt. I mean, there's there's a couple of them who haven't talked since hardly. Really? Yeah. Okay. And they're, you know, they're good drivers, or they were when they were racing, but we got in the middle of some stuff, and mm -hmm. you know. Well, you left NASCAR, I think, at the end of two fifteen season. I happen to know. In discussing with you earlier that NASCAR told you almost a year before that. Yeah, it was over that, a year. That you yeah. were going. Yeah. They tell you why. No. Never it was did. Just, just time for a change. So you worked that full year knowing you were going to be gone at the end of the season. And in your own words, you never worked harder in your life. Is that correct? It was a lot, yeah. I worked just as hard or harder than I ever worked just to try to... You know, leave on a leave on a leave on something that I would be proud of, anyways. You know, I didn't, I wasn't going to lay down. You know. Yeah. So when you did leave, however, how much of a black cloud or weight was lifted from you? I was. It's the most depressed I'd ever been in my life really? for friggin' two years or more. I, I wouldn't want. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to do anything. Two, you know, two I, years like that, at least, because you were out of the sport, or because yeah, yeah. of how things went with NASCAR. Yeah, kind of a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, I, I just never, you know, when I got hired, you know, to do that, you know, and Bill France was a big part of it, and Mike and. Brian and George Pine and you know we did the deal over dinner one off week and I went down there I'd never thought that I wouldn't be there so I didn't mind giving everything right and they treated me well there's nothing you know I mean the way we traveled the way we did things you know was okay but I had never I mean it, it you know I, I 
I still have spells where it bothers me, but I try to overlook it. But it was, I had never going in there and working for 12 years, and it never dawned on me that I would never just be there forever, you know, or at least till I was 65 or 6 or 7, you know. Well, you were out of sports that length of time, but I, now you're obviously involved in something else. Yeah. Uh, what is it, and how did it come about? Well, so now we're doing the um, uh, IMSA uh, with, and, and how this started is, so John Andrade and I go back a long time. When he was racing, whatever, we just happened to be, you know, acquaintances and friends and this, that, and the other. And, you know, when he was at the racetrack, I'd always sit and talk to Aldo out on pit road or whatever during qualifying. You know, we used to just, everybody go hang out. So. We, we had developed some uh, a reasonable friendship. And so Jarrett, his son, was sprint car racing, and he was trying to get Jarrett out of in the, doing something else, right? So he calls, uh, John calls, and one summer we went to drag races. We went to VIR to visit the SRO community up there that was running races and the governing body and talk about different stuff and look at cars and this, that, and the other. And, and so at the, so that, and, and then towards the end of 18, I think it was 18, you know, he's like, hey, I want to, I want to put something together and trying to get Jarrett to do road racing and get out of the, you know, sprint car stuff. So. He, I go up there and, you know, talk to him about it. And so we're going to do sports cars. And so, um, it's, so it's John's, it was John's team, John and Jarrett. Now it's Nancy and Jarrett. And so it's their IMSA team or their road race team. And we are doing, we started doing McLaren sports cars for two years. And then we went to the IMSA and and the LMP3 is what we run. And it started with, you know, John just wanted me to come up there and help get that thing rolling. And, you know, I was there for 16 months full time the first time. And then I scaled it back and then just, just went to test and races and things of that nature. And then uh, towards the end of last year, like in September, then. I'm back there as full time as you can be without really, you know, I live there, but I live in North Carolina too, so I've been doing that. How does that work? Did you stay home a while, then commute to Indianapolis? I That's, assume you have an apartment up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've rented a house up there this time, and yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm there more than I'm here, you know, right now. And sure. so. Hopefully, when the weather breaks, you know what I mean. I can bring family members up there to. I was gonna say you, you better know. take Lisa up there. She yeah, she'll go. She was we were headed this week until it got to be seven degrees up there, and <laughs> it, you know. So well, it's seven degrees here. Yeah, it's seven <laughs> degrees here. Yeah, so you know, I, I need that. Need her and her dogs up there. You know. Okay. All right. Cool. Do you follow NASCAR at all? Pardon me? Do you follow NASCAR at all? Oh, absolutely. No way. I don't miss a race. Really? Unless I'm traveling, unless I'm at the racetrack racing, I don't miss a, I don't miss a truck or a Xfinity or a cup race. Thank you. Yeah. I still get my phone calls from, hey, what do you think, type things. But, yeah. You know. And, I, you know and, and being on all sides of it like I've been, you know, I... I can still explain it to people where there's, they can see another side of things, you know what I mean? So those are, those are still good conversations. My phone rang off the hook during the Martinsville Cup race. I was driving to Indianapolis when my dear friend decided to ride the rim around <laughs> three and four. I mean, I'm not even, I got it on the radio and it doesn't sound the same. Then my phone's blowing up. <laughs> Right, and it's like, how, what, this, that, and the other. It's that like, was oh incredible. God. Oh, it was good for him. Yeah. Is there any chance that you could come back? To what? To this world, NASCAR. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm open for anything. I mean, I like what I do. 
Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You know, generally speaking, a door would have to close before I open another door. But I mean, I, I mean, there's no animosity here other than I just don't do it, right? And so, I mean, I, when I was eight years old, I went to my first NASCAR modified race, right? And I've been hooked ever since. Got good friends that are here today and have passed, and you know, it's it's. I always say this: I would not trade my snapshot of the sport, but I, where I started and where I wound up, that time frame for anything. You know, when I started, we drove to every race, including Riverside. You know, you piled in a van, you drove the you drove the Riverside over I forty. And somewhere along the line, I'd see Eddie and Len Wood, you know, at a truck stop, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's what we did, you know. So yeah. to do that and and how it progressed, you know, people out try it old school one time might make you think twice about that's something. That's right. 